G'day, g'day, and welcome back to the True For YouTube channel. Today, I am joined by Daniel Busher, who's been surprisingly let out of prison for the weekend, and we're going to do our official version one of the uh, of our mock draft, Busher, today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling quite good. Yeah? I feel like I'm going to draft you under the table. Gross. That sounds... That's always... Sound, that's very simple. Then also make some selections. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so today we're going to go through our top 20. So the format of this video, of course, is that we're going to go pick by pick. So you're going to have Gold Coast pick one, I'll have Gold Coast pick two, you're going to have Melbourne pick three, and then we're going to go all the way through down to pick 20, because after that it becomes a little bit too hard to predict. Um, but yeah, today, Bush, why don't you take, uh, why don't you kick us off with uh, Gold Coast pick one, who are you picking, and maybe tell us a little bit about why you're picking well, obviously, this is the part where I take Hugo Ralph Smith. Hugo Ralph Smith, no, no, one. Nah. Matty Rowell, obviously. Matty Rowell, okay. been the best player, Why? performed all year, very consistent. Had his twenty-four touches a game, good with the clearance. They reckon the most complete junior season they've almost ever seen. Is the we way do some hear of the that almost have... every year, don't yeah. we? They were saying it about last year's Sam Walsh, so yeah, take yeah. it with a pinch of salt. They but said it Sam about Walsh. David Swallow too. Yeah. Yeah, no, I take your point. I think that is the obvious pick one. Do you have any concerns about his flaming red hair against that awful red jumper? Yeah, it's a bit of a clash. Yeah, maybe they did draft Peter Wright, so there is yeah. a clear strategy. And Josh Schoenfeld as yeah, well. Yeah, that's true. He's another one. They, they do love the gingers up in the Gold Coast. Yes, yeah, they do. Um, ironic because they've got a lot of sun up there and they sunburn easily, so it could be problematic. <laughs> it's highly ironic. Um, with pick two, I'm going to pick uh, his best mate, Noah Anderson. I think that's another no-brainer. He's yeah, yeah. a big body midfielder, 191 centimetres. Um, got a big right boot on him. Um, yeah, he's, he's kind of like that prototypical inside mid these days. Um, Tom Green's another one where, you know, there's just so much upside there. And uh, we could probably clean up his kicking a little bit, but I could definitely see him being one of the best players in the draft. And Rowland Anderson would be a huge coup for Gold Coast. So, um, and it helps retention, obviously, the fact that they're such close friends. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So they've got a little bit of talent burgeoning after Lukosius Rankin and King last year. So, uh, But we'll move on. Pick three. This is probably going to shape the rest of the top ten. This is a really interesting pick. Who are you taking? I'm going to go with Lockie Ash, I think. I really like his pace for Melbourne. He adds something a bit different to that team, I feel, compared to what they've already got. You're a bastard. I really want a Lockie Ash for pick four <laughs> for Adelaide. That sucks. But sorry, continue. It's good for Melbourne, though. It is good for Melbourne. He's a great player. Like, I, like Watching tape on him, he's just... Got that burst of speed, nice bit of class off the back flank. Serious question. Yeah. How much tape of under 18-year-olds do you actually have in your possession? <laughs> mate, my film taking is a bit of a hobby, mate. We all <laughs> yeah. have to have, we're all allowed a hobby, mate. Yeah, well, that's not what the court said. But anyway, this <laughs> is <laughs> so bad. Um, all right, fair enough. Okay, so you're taking Lockie Ash. You're taking my pick. I think that's a great call for Melbourne. Yep. Um, so there's a few others they could consider. With Adelaide's pick, now... One player that they're kind of linked... Well, not linked to, but one player that is meant to go top three or four is Hayden Young. I'm not yeah. going to tick Hayden Young. The reason being, Adelaide is going through a rebuild. I feel like they need some genuine, like, meat and bones players. They need to pick, like, an on-baller or an exciting player. I don't necessarily think, like, a, a good, solid defender is what I would be taking with their early pick. So, as a really long-winded answer to that, I'm going to bid on GWS's Tom Green. And you, yeah, you, as we said in the rules as well at the start, you did um, we say the rules at the start? We didn't say it at the start. I meant before the video. Um, so if I bid on a player, you yep. decide whether that GWS matches. So well, yeah, I'd be matching that as GWS. Cool. Yeah. But also, do your point quickly with the defenders versus Tom the, the, the Green. You could say he's a bit more similar to the Crouch brothers, your Sloan sort of guy. So he, he maybe feels less of a need to Tom Green. Yeah, I think he's a lot more argument. talented. I mean, it's hard to say. Obviously, yeah. he's only an eighteen-year-old. But he could be he he could project more as like a Paddy Cripps type. Yeah, you know that's who he's compared to more so in the crash. Like he's a lot taller than both of them for a start. Yeah. So I think he's you know your real like long term on baller. But you yeah. said you said Giants matching. Yeah, Giants okay, matching. Sweet. Yeah. So obviously we're not going to do live trades in this because it's going to be too way too hard. Yeah. So we'll just assume that GWS match, and that means I'm back on the clock. With Adelaide, uh, again, I'm not taking Young. I'm going to go Caleb Sarong. He's a bit of an undersized sort of mid forward. A really exciting player. I think he's one of the most talented players in the sorry in the draft pool, but uh, just a little bit undersized. However, I think he's a really good fit for Adelaide. Fair enough. So you got Sydney with pick six. You mentioned him earlier. I'm going to take Hayden Young. He's just booming kick. Like some of the kicks I saw him pull off in the championships in these highlights were ridiculous. That one against WA late in the game to get him ahead before WA took it from him right at the end. Mm. That kick was pretty much on the back fifty. He pretty much kicked it nearly to the forward fifty. Hit a guy on the run on the tip. Beautiful kick. 
one of the best kicks I've ever seen in my life, actually. Yeah, I've got to be honest. Yeah. That was a cracking kick. Yeah, okay. He's well, the sort of place. And the thing is, with Sydney, they've got like some of those guys like Heaney and stuff, the crashes. He's more of a silky, nice kick that would complement those sort of guys real nicely, I think. I totally agree Especially with you. Especially in the back line where, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think Young is a great call for Sydney. I didn't want him at Adelaide just because I wanted to go for a bit more of a, a sexy player. No disrespect to him, he's very <laughs> handsome. But um, no, I just kind of wanted more like a sort of like a dynamic sort of game breaking player. Um, and that's why I thought the others would go ahead of him. So I just had to justify that. So I'm on the clock with Fremantle Bush. Yeah, um, I'm going to take Elijah Taylor from Perth <laughs> or Liam Henry. I'm going to take with pick seven just to be safe. No, just kidding. Uh, I'm going to play. You're, you're probably not going to like this because I think you have a couple of ideas for who you want Fremantle to take. I'm going to take Sam Flanders with pick seven. Uh, I feel like as a genuine forward mid sort of uh, game breaking player, He's the sort of type of player that Fremantle need, more so than a Robertson or a Jackson. Um, and that's just the way I see it. And I don't think Fremantle are necessarily the type to just pick him because it from WA or Robertson just because he's from WA. I could be wrong on that, but I'm just going to take yeah. Flanders. So I do like some Flanders, I've got to say. Yeah, well, you love The Simpsons. Yeah, I do. Yeah, absolutely. Do. I do love yeah. making those the Ned Flanders jokes and that sort of stuff. <laughs> but all kidding aside, I was watching some, some of his tape today, Flanders, and I really like the way he goes about it. He's all over the ground. Mm. He can add a bit of X Factor to your forward line, which is. I think that's kind of the type of player that Fremantle needs to sort of add to like your Chero and Brayshaw. Robertson maybe more of the same thing. Mind you, you could end up taking it with pick ten, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, so you got your you've got Melbourne with pick eight. Okay, I'm gonna do one here actually. That's gross. Might throw some because I was thinking Flanders with my pick eight at Melbourne actually, but since you've mm. beat me to it, I'm gonna have to bid on my guy Liam Henry here. You know, bid on with pick eight. Yeah, that is hectic. Absolutely. So, okay, in that case, does that mean Fremantle have to match it with pick 10? Yeah. Yeah, they have to give up pick 10 and they'll get a later pick, right? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, that probably won't even be in our top 20, so I don't know exactly how the points are going to work. So, we just say... Freo lose pick 10, basically. Oh, shit. So, you've actually just cucked your own team. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I like but it. I'm doing like it. it. I'm being as honest as I can with yeah, this sort yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Fair enough. Okay. Mm. So, um... Oh, well, I'll say Fremantle accept. Yeah. Because I think Liam Henry's probably around thereabouts on talent. They'll be a bit miffed yeah. at that, but I think they'll say it. So let's say you're still on the clock with Melbourne and it's actually pick nine now. Okay. So now that I have to retake that pick, I'd go Luke Jackson. Luke Jackson, yep. yeah. I think that is the obvious call. Melbourne have been linked to them, haven't they? Even though I don't really see how he feels a need or... But don't forget, yeah. like, Proust and Gawain are, like, nearly 30. Yeah. Right? So, well, actually, I don't know how old Proust is, but he's not young. Um, Jackson yeah. is probably about four years off coming good. So, mm. yeah. No, I think it's a sound yeah. pick. A sound pick. So, that was Carlton with pick nine. Oh, sorry, pick ten now. Um, mm. This is a tough one for me because I think they've gone real midfield heavy. I would be tempted to take Robertson. I'm actually going to go Brody Kemp. They've kind of been linked to him. Um, and he's sort of like that. Uh, he did his ACL and he's like an oversized midfielder. And I think he just adds a bit of a point of difference to some of the guys they've drafted recently. Obviously, they've got a big midfielder in Cripps, but someone like, you know, Stocker and Walsh and Fisher, you know, he this guy adds a bit more of a, um, a genuine point of difference. So um, you're on with, uh, say, so, yeah, so Fremantle lose their pick 10. So you've actually got Hawthorne now at pick Ooh, 11. That's bizarre because I'd actually planned for pick 12, weirdly, like in my... Because when we'd preemptively done it, I'd planned as 12, 14. Yeah, now, right. Okay, so I've thrown you out with these bits. Well, you've thrown yourself out with these bits. Yeah, I have, to be fair. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Hawthorne. Hawthorne. On the yeah, I hadn't planned for Hawthorne at all. Yeah. This is why you got to prepare for all eventualities, mate. Yeah, I'd planned for bloody Portie. Fucking hell. Uh, <laughs> this has really thrown you. Yeah, they'd take Robertson. Ah, and you shat on me the other day in the podcast because I was like, Robertson to Hawthorne, maybe. Mm. <laughs> no, you... It's a good pick up though yeah, sweet. Mm. Well this leaves me with a couple of options here For Port Adelaide um, So yeah obviously they've taken They took Rosie Butters Dersma last year <laughs> You were not happy with this How is it? How has it wrecked you? Because I've planned on 12, 14 So now I'm going to be picking the opposite teams That I'd planned on yeah, being well, That's alright That's all right. You got, you got your list there You'll be able yeah, to work it out Oh, I picked my guys based on need. It was all very nice. Yeah, well, no, you just got to adapt. So Port Adelaide. Um, so, uh, yeah, with the three guys they picked up last year, they're just kind of looking probably for best available. They probably still need some outside talent. I'm considering two names here. They're both South Australian, but I'm going to go with Dylan Stevens. He's one of my favourite players to watch in the draft. 
really, really fast, really skillful. And I think Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide could still use some outside talent. I know they've added some in recent years. But um, yeah, they're going to take the take the, um, the local boy here. And you're on the clock with the Bulldogs at pick 13. Are you ready? <laughs> well, I guess I'm winging it at this point. Waitman. Waitman. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about Waitman. He's a, one of the better small forwards in the draft. He's really like a bit of Jamie Alabam, can pluck a grab through mm. size, which is really impressive. Like takes grabs you wouldn't expect for a guy's size. Plays bigger, can play a bit of lead up if you need to, but he's more of a crummy, useful small forward. Yeah, I like that pick. He's he does look actually really talented. Mm. I, I was watching some, yeah. uh, the the, um, the AFL video, and it's obviously just his highlights, but yeah. um, I thought it was really impressive. He looks like a real sort of like Willy Rioli type, yeah. like, just impact from like not a lot of possessions. Necessarily. Yeah. So, yeah, good call. So the Bulldogs get a uh, small forward there uh, to replace Dowhouse a couple of years after the fact. Oh, we pick 14, Geelong. Now, they're in a bit of a rebuild. Uh, not a rebuild. They're preemptively rebuilding. They do want to nail this draft and take best available to sort of get that next generation through. I'm going to say they take Fisher Mackesy as the best available key defender. He's still on the board, um, and I think he's certainly best available, and I think Geelong could use um, a talent, you know, to shore up their defensive stocks. Yeah. So um, you're back with Gold Coast Suns. Gold Coast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not even sure who's. Gold Coast is easy because they need everything. Yeah, obviously. So you just kind of want to pick. Um, your well, best I know player. what I want to pick. I'm just trying to figure it out. Uh, who we got here that I'd like for him? I had this all so <laughs> nice until I <laughs> fucked myself. You knew this could happen, though. My list is annoying. Cause I can't remember who's. I'm going to go. Actually, I'm going to bid on Finn McGuinness, sorry. Finn McGuinness. All right. Yeah. Okay, so here that is coming after um, Hawthorne's pick. So we'll just assume Hawthorne can match it. I'll, I will, I'll accept that. Yeah. Oh, wait. Did, is there, did they say something they wouldn't accept a bid in the first round? I'm I think I read sure. something like that where Hawthorne wouldn't match it in the first round. No, I think they wouldn't match it before their first pick. Yeah, I'd say why wouldn't they match another first round yeah. pick once they've already used their own? They're only going to be paying with yeah. whatever picks they've left yeah, second I th- round I up. think I'm remembering it more uh, wrongly I think I think they probably would match this I think they should match it and therefore I will match it um, fair enough so we'll bump the order down a bit that means Hawthorne has taken Finn McGuinness at pick 15 um, I like it so you, you're actually still on the clock with Gold Coast Suns so now I've killed my order again <laughs> uh, <laughs> just so I'm Gold Coast ruining again ruining all your selections Okay, I'll just go with what I've gone here. Even though it's for a different team, I'm going to say Trent Rivers. Trent Rivers, okay, yeah. Yeah, a little earlier than I expected, but I like it. What can you tell us about Trent Rivers? He's a great, he's a free boy, mate. He's got that going for him, but he's a defense, like a 189 centimetre defender. I think he's in that sort of height range. Mm-hmm. I might be a bit off on the height there, but really good player, like reads the play well off the half back, can impact the game, got a can, bit of endurance about him, can get up and down the field. Good thing about Rivers is that he's a big Eagles fan, so going to Gold Coast means he's guaranteed to come back to us. Absolutely, Mark. So I like it. I like it. <laughs> cool. uh, I'm on the clock with Brisbane at selection 17. I kind of um, tallied up what they kind of need. I think a halfback flanker is probably one of their bigger needs, and there's a really talented one still on the list, and it's Will Gold. I, uh, or Gould. How do you say that? I think it's Gould, I think. Gould, yeah, yeah, yeah. my mistake. Um, that's what happens when you just read the names and just like don't actually listen to the commentary. When um, that pick belonged to Brisbane, that's who I was taking. Yeah, well, when I was going to take him at yeah. pick 12 uh, for Port, um, just on, right. on the basis of best available, but Stevens was there, and I liked yeah, Stevens. I really like because we were talking before, and I was hinting at someone for, I'd take for Freo if it came up. Stevens was that person. I really liked him for Freo yeah. if, he, if the cards fell that way. Yep, yep. No, he's, a, he's a bit of a gun. He's a bit of a Shannon Hearn type. Uh, I guess this is an easy comparison because he's, he's a massive halfback flanker from South Australia. He's a bit yeah, of a man cool, child. Yeah, yeah. 106 kilos. Yeah, a big boy. That is huge. He doesn't look at though. Look at him. He's, yeah. so he looks rock solid. Don't yeah. misinterpret me. But he doesn't like you'd expect 106 at that age to look more puppy fatty than yeah. he than he looks. True. Very true. Um, so you've got Geelong again at pick 18, and we've got three selections left. Ooh, okay, Geelong. Okay, actually, I figured out that was the pick I was going to take Rivers with. I've, yeah, I got confused with my own there, but I'll take the other East Freo defendery wingy type player in Jeremy Sharp. Oh, I see. A little bit of a stank in the morning. Back to back years, I see Geelong reaching for a bit of pace out of WA. Last year with Jordan Clark, who's worked out. Oh, Jordan Clark last year? Or last year, I think. Yeah, it was last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah I confused myself there, but yeah, Jordan yeah. Clark last year. 
this year. Jeremy Sharp, another good player, can play on the wing, add some pace. I like also it. Slide in the back. I like it. Geelong tend to sometimes reach for players you don't expect them to, and then they end up yeah. guns. And I think Sharp is a really good talent as well. So I like that call. Right. Um, Port Adelaide is next. I've got pick 19. What do they need? I've written they need some speed. So we got that with Stevens. And uh, who is probably the next most talented player? Ooh, I've got a couple here I want to pick. I might go with young Miles Bergman. I didn't mind some Bergman. I was eyeing yeah. him off for Port Adelaide, actually, when I fought, when that was my pick before I killed myself. Yeah. I was eyeing him off. Yeah, so he's not quite necessarily a need he's kind of like a like a mid, yeah. medium tall sort yeah. of mid forward um, better like, x factor about him though that's the thing poor adelaide is sort of at the point where they're not looking for role players to support their stars i think they still need a couple more potential stars for, mm. if they pan out a few more heavy lifters to put pieces around and he yeah. could be one of those guys if it pans out yeah i like it so i'm pretty comfortable yeah. with that pick um and that means with pick 20 you've got the final selection Bush. so why don't you take us through richmond's, richmond's pick 20 Ooh, there's a few names left here that interest me. For Richmond, oh, I could. I'm going to go with Will Day actually. Oh, that's a good selection. Because losing, even though he's more of a defender, he can probably still do some of that stuff. Brandon Ellis did. Who was a bit of a halfback, a wingy type dude. Ellis, he yeah. replaces that sort of role. He's got a lot of X factor potential to him. Mm-hmm. He's skinny at the moment, but puts in the work he has all the potential well not all the potential in the world but he could yeah. pan out pretty well you know what I mean cousin of Gold Coast Sam Day as well yep. I was going to take him with the next pick if we were going to have a next pick Gold Coast yeah. um, picking him up but uh, yeah in the, that, that's a pretty good top 20 so I'll run through them from the top for people watching at home Raul and Anderson went pick 1 and 2 to the Gold Coast Big Suns shocker there yeah Melbourne took Lockie Ash the GWS matched a Tom Green bid at pick 4 and then Adelaide took Caleb Sarong Hayden Young went to the Swans Fremantle then doubled up on Flanders and Henry and lost uh, that pick 10, and they'll get a pick later in the draft in this hypothetical. Um, after that, Luke Jackson joined the Demons. Carlton jumped on Brody Kemp. Bush's boyfriend, Devin Robertson, went to Hawthorne at pick 11. Dylan Stevens, uh, the SA boy, stayed home with Port Adelaide. Bulldogs got Cody Waitman, the small forward. Geelong picked up a key back in Fisher Mackesy, and Hawthorne then had to match a Gold Coast bid for Finn McGuinness. Yet at pick 15. So they've got Robertson and McGuinness. So some two good young midfield talents for them. Trent Rivers joined Gold Coast. Will Gould went to the Brisbane Lions. You leapt on Jeremy Sharp with pick 18 for Geelong. I went with Miles Bergman with pick 19 for Port Adelaide uh, to go with Stevens at their first pick. And then finally, you went Will Day, the halfback flank up from South Australia to round up top 20. Real quick, Bush, was there anyone on your list that you're a little disappointed you couldn't pick? As in, like, anyone yeah. still on the board there? Or are you pretty happy with how that went? No one that's really... No names that really jump out at me is... For me, I uh, think Josh Worrell I had probably going in the top 20. I think I was going to look at him for Geelong. I feel like they needed some key talent. But Fisher Mackesy was uns- yeah. well, surprisingly still on the board for me at 14. So um, that's why I didn't have any other player... Uh, any other club lining up for a key position? I've got to admit, if I was still in charge of that port pick where you took Stevens, I was probably going to take Mackesy if I was still... Yeah, there. right, yeah. Because I was sort of eyeing him off as that Dougal Howard. He literally, mm. Dougal Howard replaced me. He can play either end. Well, more that's of a, a good defender. point. That's a good point, yeah. So, so they could look, be looking at a key back like Worrell uh, at pick 19, Port Adelaide. Yeah. So, yeah, that's very interesting. Anyway, that was actually really fun. So, I like, if you're still around, we should do another one of these sometime before the draft. Let us know, guys, what you thought of our draft. Who drafted better? Uh, or will we both equally terrible? Um, the, <laughs> I think I know which one it is. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> thanks, guys. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. If you like the West Coast Eagles, go subscribe to my other channel, Jesse Thomas. And uh, also, if you like KSI and Logan Paul and their fight, we actually just did a reaction video on the Jesse Thomas YouTube channel as well, so go subscribe to that as well. Busher, it's been a pleasure having you at your house, and thank thanks you. very much. We'll see you all, all very much. soon. Cheers.